Hello, I'm Captain Ethan Whitehall, Company D, Psyching with Sharpshooters. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the sack coat, or what was properly called as the fatigue blouse. Fatigue blouses were used for what is called fatigue duty, um, digging ditches, latrines, chopping wood, uh, cutting trees, building roads. Um, it was different from what was known as the dress coat or the frock coat, uh, which we uh, primarily wear as sharpshooters for early war events. Um, they can be seen in one of our previous videos um, about those. So fatigue blouses come in two styles, uh, period correct and mainstream. First one that I'm going to show you is a mainstream coat. Uh, these are pretty much just off the rack, sold by most uh, sutlers at reenactments. As you can see, this one has no lining with a uh, kidney-shaped pocket, has a size tag, you know, made in America, dry clean only. However, most of these are made in Pakistan and India. Um, there's no sleeve lining, it's just all wool, uh, none of the seams are pressed, machine sewn button stitches. Uh, most of them have very large buttons on them. However, this one actually has the more correct uh, shape, uh, size, uh, federal legal buttons. The biggest gripe that you'll hear with most of these sack coats is the color. Uh, these have, in certain lightings, a very purplish color. Uh, that's because of red and blue mix. There's no true blue uh, color used in these reproduction uh, mainstream sack coats. And you'll see some reenactors at some events with very well-worn, well-used coats that they probably uh, bought in the early 90s, mid-90s. When they first started reenacting and they have faded to a purple color, a almost violet on some of these. Uh, they don't really follow much of a uh, period pattern. Um, I believe Dan Wamba uh, once talked about these as these look more of a pajama top from the 60s. Uh, some actually look more legitimate than others um, by hanging on people, however, the wool is very heavy. It's basically the same that most people make for their mainstream frock coats. However, there are many great uh, reproductions out there that are very good quality. Uh, Wamba White and Company is definitely one of them. I know all of us in the sharpshooters have Wamba White sack coats or those who don't have them are planning on getting them. So Wamba White and Company, uh, we have two of their coats in two different styles. One's a kit and one is their contract blouse. The first contract, uh, first sack coat we're going to show you is the contract blouse that is our first sergeant's. As you can see, compared to the other one, it is more of an actual blue indigo color, which is how the originals were dyed. Uh, as you can see, very nice blue, almost purple or navy blue. On the inside, it is lined. Um, most sack coats during the Civil War were lined. Uh, I believe the numbers were for every four sack coats, there was one that was uh, unlined and three were lined. Uh, most of them were of a wool material that had to have some wool content for it to be warm um, and also kind of prevent uh, premature wear. Also what's seen in very good reproductions that's not seen in mainstream is the inspector stamps. These were made in the millions during the Civil War. Um, once the dress coat or frock coat ran out, sack coats were the most asked for and requisitioned item in the Civil War for coats. So most of them ha were, you know, pieced out to uh, contractors, arsenals, and each one had to have an inspector stamp. Otherwise, it wouldn't be sent out to be worn by any soldier in the field and would probably just be scrapped, probably used for canteen uh, covers or great coat linings. Um, different arsenals used different types of lining. Uh, this is just a generic contract blouse. The, there's nothing out of the ordinary with it. Uh, the Schuylkill Arsenal out of Philadelphia had very wacky linings. Uh, the next coat we have actually is a Schuylkill Arsenal pattern coat. Um, and as you can see how the material actually hangs on the coat, um, this is a 10 ounce wool flannel. This is probably a 18 ounce just wool, but as you can see this actually, just by shaking it, how it kind of flows is this, it's just very stiff. Um, 
you know, these were worn in the summer months. These were a lot lighter weight wool. This is still heavy. It's going to keep you very warm, sweating in hot summer months. Uh, there's details in the collar um, on most authentic reproductions of a stitching pattern to keep the collar down, which is not seen in the reproductions. You'll see some guys who have the Dracula collar, you know, sticking up like this and it won't go down. Some guys have even resorted to sewing their collar down. Uh, these little sewing welts and all that, for some reason, they knew way back in the Civil War, you know, something like that would happen and how to prevent it. <clears throat> there is a large, it's called a kidney shaped uh, breast pocket because it's on the breast and it's roughly kidney shaped. These uh, pockets are massive. You can stash a small book in there. Um, in my uh, SACO, when I used to carry it as a first sergeant, I kept uh, a notebook, a drill manual, and uh, a schedule for the uh, event. Our first sergeant, since he is a senior NCO, has a pocket watch in his. Um, soldiers carried a lot of things in their pockets. Um, there's even period photographs of soldiers carrying toothbrushes in their buttonholes, uh, pipes, pipe tobacco, uh, bags, all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, with these, the buttonholes are hand sewn as um, pretty much a standard from Wamba White and Company. All the seams that you, or stitching you see on the outside is hand sewn by them, but everything else on the inside is machine sewn. Uh, there's small little reinforcing stitches here around the pocket that keep it from tearing and ripping out. That's also not seen in uh, most mainstream uh, reproductions. And I believe our first sergeant actually has original buttons on his sack coat. Um, again, you know, you, you have an authentic coat, you might as well go the extra mile, get the extra authentic buttons. Um, for the price of originals, they're actually fairly cheap um, to come by. Some don't have the backs, some are very heavily patinaed. Uh, these are really excellent buttons. So the next coat that we have is a kit from Wamba White Company that I sewed myself for uh, Private Severson. So Wamba White Company uh, supplies kits. Uh, I believe their contract blouses are somewhere in the $250 range. Their Shukal Arsenal, which is this pattern of coat, are $375 for partially uh, hand sewn. So all the visible stitchings, you know, uh, hand sewn, those are, like I said, about $375. Or if you want to spend the big bucks, five, almost $600 for a completely hand-sewn coat. But the best route, at least for us in the sharpshooters, uh, is the kit. Their kits cost $130 and they come with everything you need. All the material, everything's pre-cut. It gives you plenty of thread, even wax to thread your, uh, uh, for your buttons or for your uh, thread. Sorry about that and also comes with very nice uh, reproduction buttons. You also have a very awesome lining. The Shukal Arsenal, uh, for some reason, decided to have very odd checker patterns for all their coat linings. Um, this is probably the more mild that I've seen. I know Corporal Hardway has a sack coat that has a very interesting uh, lining pattern. As always, they supply you with sleeve linings with your arsenal stamps. SA stands for Shukal Arsenal. This is a uh, size uh, 42 coat. As the sizings went, uh, 42s were a four stamp. However, this one's marked three. Um, I'm not sure why they did that, but I'm sure during the Civil War that they would have been misstamped, uh, mislabeled sometimes. But of course, it's the military, one size fits none. Um, sack coats are meant to be big and kind of billowy. You're doing a lot of manual labor, moving around in them. So they are meant to have a little more wiggle room anyways. Um, this one, as I said, was hand stitched by myself. So all these stitchings on the inside, the buttonholes, the outer seams, uh, everything is either back stitched, whip stitched, uh, flat filled seams, that kind of, uh, construction and this one has probably a better view of the slight 
wavy stitching pattern that goes into the collar of the coat. <clears throat> um, again, it's Wamba's white, uh, very nice indigo wool flannel. Uh, if this was an unlined coat, it would probably weigh no less than a pound. In fact, if you can pull the lining up sometimes and you have very good lighting or natural lighting out in the sun, if you hold it up like this, in fact, even now I can actually see light pouring through the weave of the material. Uh, that's how you know you have a very good reproduction. Um, of course, people think in the sharp, you know, with sharpshooters, why are you wearing blue coats? Aren't you supposed to be wearing green? The case with that is yes, early in the war. However, they were only issued the frock coats twice. From then, they had the sack coats. If they did have the frock coats, they were kept in storage during the spring and summer months. They were uh, heavier weight, longer, therefore hotter in the summer months. These are definitely a lifesaver. Um, we do have some events in central and eastern Washington in the summertime where these definitely come in handy where you keep cooler. <clears throat> and it makes sense to us on why the sharpshooters love the sack coats. Uh, again, like I said earlier, these were issued in the millions. So of course, why would you have, you know, special requisition for a green coat that takes plenty of hours to produce, come from an arsenal, go to a depot, and then get shipped or sent to the front to you when a quartermaster has hundreds, hundreds of these on hand already. Uh, by the end of the war, almost every single sharpshooter was wearing a sack coat when they were disbanded as sharpshooters. Every sharpshooter during the Civil War wore a sack coat at least once, I can guarantee that. Uh, and it's highly underrepresented with the sharpshooters. Um, most sharpshooter reenactors like to uh, wear the green frock, the green trousers, the green cap, the leather leggings. Um, I believe Brian White called that the sexy period of the Berdans because they looked very good with that setup. However, the most generic look and underrepresented is the blue trousers or uh, green or blue trousers, the blue sack coat and a green cap. Uh, I really can't stress that enough. It is very underrepresented and I, I like to think that we probably have the most accurate impression for that with the blue coat. I know most of us have them or are getting them this off season. Uh, everyone in the sharpshooters definitely gets a seal of a deal with the uh, sack coat kits. I sew them for free for those in the unit. Those outside of the unit, I do charge a small fee for it, but everyone in the sharpshooters really appreciates having these in the summer months. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a like. And if you'd like more content on sharpshooters, how to's, uniform reviews, uh, everything like that, please subscribe. Thank you.